Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Control Z Creations, and I'm giving you guys this tutorial today on how to make custom HUDs or heads up displays, just like the one in this intro. Alright, so you can see we have two different HUDs going in this. We have this little um, lock on target sort of thing with the numbers going and it says biotech up here and we also have this system power levels bar with a bunch of bars that go up and down randomly so we're gonna head into Photoshop and I already have a document open here and we're just gonna wanna erase I'm sorry we're gonna wanna unlock the layer from background first and then we're just going to erase everything so the background becomes transparent. Alright, so once you have that, we're going to want to go to the rectangular marquee tool. And we're going to hold shift and we're just going to drag so that we have a square. It doesn't matter what size your square is, we will be able to change that in After Effects. So you really just want to, you know, just make it so that it's center and it's a perfect square. And that's why you hold Shift. So now we're just going to fill it with white. We're going to go back to the regular rectangular marquee tool. We're going to hit Command D. And we're just going to draw a new shape that matches this all right so we have this selected just inside the border of the last rectangle square that we made so now we're going to go to the eraser tool and we're just going to erase everything that's in the middle all right now we're going to hit command d and you can see i messed up in getting rid of this part right here. Alright, now we're going to hit Command D. You can see we have this outline of a square. And that's pretty much just going to be the outline of this border right here around this. So, we'll go back into Photoshop. We're going to grab our text tool. And my computer is being a little slow just because I am recording and I have all these programs opened at one time. But so we're going to use this font called Digital 7. You can get that from thefont.com. And we're just going to type, you know, what I had before it's system power levels. All right. So we're going to keep it black just so I can see it. Uh, it makes it a lot easier when it's that way. But we want to size it down some. It's a little too big. Alright, this should be good. So we're just going to put these right up at the top of the box. And we'll switch it to white now. Alright. So we're going to go back, deselect that, and you can barely see it, but that's okay. Now we're going to want to go back to the rectangular marquee tool. We're not going to hold down shift this time, and we're just going to draw a little bar, but not all the way to the edge, like that, and we'll just move it over so it's center, and we're going to fill it with white. We'll make a new layer first. And we're just going to fill that with white. Alright, so you can see that if I invert right now, this is there, this is there, and this is there. So I actually was able to see a little bit of black there. So we'll just get rid of that because we don't want that and this is looking pretty good right now this is just about all you need so we're just gonna wanna 
merge the layers just so I can see it all together. Now we're gonna hit Command I, and you can see that's what it'll look like just in white. And so now we're gonna want to Command I again, and we're gonna File Save for Web and Devices, and we'll just save this as a PNG 24. So we're gonna save it as a file. We're going to save it as HUD1 and save it to our desktop. So we're going to save that real fast. Now we're going to go into After Effects. And you can see that I have an animation already in here. So now we're going to want to click Import File. If you come in here, Desktop, HUD1. And we're just going to want to click and import. So now you can see that you have it in here. We're just going to drag it on. And there it is. But we do have a transparent background, which means that you will be able to see the animation behind it. So now we're just going to want to hold shift and just, I'm sorry, click, drag it down, and start holding shift so it makes it into a perfect square or size it, sizes it down equally and we're gonna make it about this big so now we'll drag it and put it right in this corner there you go okay so now once you have that you're gonna want to layer new solid and you're just gonna wanna make it white. This is where we're gonna make the bars that go into this. Now we're just gonna wanna size this down. Do not hold shift. And you're just gonna wanna, you know, take a look at it in here. So figure out the size. I want mine to be about, we'll go with this big. And now we want to make it the correct size. so that it is under here alright so that's looking good now we're gonna want to command D which is gonna duplicate the layer that we just had and now we're gonna right click go into blending mode and it should be on normal right now but we're gonna want to do subtract so subtract is going to get rid of everything that is within that shape. So we're going to drag the HUD above our other things, our other layers. And we're going to go to the subtracted layer. And we're just going to drag that down. Make sure to keep it even. You can even use the down key to do this. So. There you go. Now you can see that it's just subtracting whatever is under this box, which means when this bar tends to go outside of this box, you won't say it. Now, to make the first bar animate or go up and down, we're going to go into it. And there you go. We're going to select this, transform, just lower the opacity to maybe. Let's see, let's see. Maybe so we'll go with seventy percent. And this needs to be one hundred percent. Alright, we'll we'll just keep it white right now. We won't fix the opacity. So we will go into here and this position we're gonna wanna Fix it so it goes up and down, pretty much just like this. It'll just go up and down like this, and that's really all that you want. So we're going to keyframe position, and you can see that it'll start here. Now we're just going to skip a little bit ahead, and, you know, drag it down. And we're just going to keep doing this, and we're just going to keep 
going up and down just randomly you know doesn't matter how far you go down or how far you go up just make it random so it looks good and we're just gonna keep playing around with this all the way through the animation and start to make them bigger so that this tutorial isn't so long Alright, so now you can see that we have the keyframes going along the whole animation. And so now, whenever I go back to the first frame and play it, you'll see that the bar jumps up and down just randomly. And you know, that's looking pretty good. So, we're going to want to rename this. Oh, sorry. We're going to want to rename it as Solid Bar. Alright. And we're going to want to rename this as Subtract. Just so we know which one is which. Alright, so that's good. Now we're going to want to go to Solid Bar again. Command D, so we have another solid bar, and just drag that one over, so there's an equal amount of space between. And now we're gonna want to go to. We're we're gonna want to drag the solid bar above subtract. So now we're gonna go to subtract, Command D, so there's a second subtract, and we're gonna drag that one above the solid bar. And now this one should be in the same spot. So now we are going to just move it over so it fits again right about there. And now you can see that there's nothing there below. And our solid bar, since we duplicated it, it's going to have keyframes already set. So we'll just drag, click and drag to select all the keyframes and we're just going to delete it. So now we're going to go back to the first keyframe and we're just going to do the same technique that we did before but first I want this to start out here so we're going to tick the key, the position keyframe and this one I'm not going to make so long so I'm just going to you know, bring it up and just randomly do these up and down so that it uh you know looks realistic and it'll look good. So Alright, so that wasn't as long as the other one, so we're just going to play it, and you can see that the bars just, you know, randomly go up and down again, and I do believe that there is room for a third bar, so we're going to want to close this out, go to solid bar 2, command D, so there's a third one, bring that above subtract 2, and we're going to want to go and delete all the keyframes again. get rid of that 
I'm going to drag its position over so it is even with the others. Alright, so now we're going to go to subtract 2, command D, and drag that above solid bar 3. And we're just going to want to fix the position on it so you can see that it starts to delete the bars. And once you have it set so you don't see any white, I actually may have to. fix this a bit alright I'm not gonna make it perfect just uh, you guys get the idea so I'm just gonna wanna go and I'm gonna fix this one so this one's not even uh, as long or as time consuming as making the keyframes as the other two has been so we're going to take position skip ahead and really what I like to do is I like to make the third bar in the middle between the second bar and the third bar and usually it just looks pretty good that way so now we're just going to make that in between the middle skip ahead this one we actually will look good if we made it go up so we'll do that. Now we're going to see that it's in the middle again. Skip ahead. Still in the middle, but we want to make it random. So we don't want it to stay still. So we're just going to drop it to the bottom. Now we're going to put it back in the middle. middle again and one last time middle so now if we play it back you'd see that the bars just you know go randomly and the smaller you make the keyframes the, the smaller the space between the keyframes the more it will bounce up and down and it'll look um, more intense I guess you could say but you can see that this third bar goes a lot slower just because I spaced out the keyframes so much. So you may want to make your keyframes, you know, real close between maybe do one every half second. And that's usually what I like to do. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. Expect another one on making the lock on target really soon. So thank you guys for watching. I'm Control Z Creations and that's it. Bye.